All right, congruent triangles notes. <coughs> this is our next set of notes in unit four. Congruent triangles. This set of notes is named after the unit. Congruent triangles. So, congruent triangles. Triangles with the same shape and size. And then after that, this means all corresponding parts. The word corresponding, this should be familiar to y'all. <coughs> we used that a lot when we did parallel lines and transversals. But we're going to talk about what corresponding parts mean. Uh, and when you talk about corresponding parts, you're talking about the angles and the sides that are congruent in each triangle. Okay, when triangles are congruent, we can write a congruency statement. We practiced this a little bit in our last unit at the end of transformations. I tried to show y'all how to write congruency statements. That's what today is about, writing congruency statements. It's going to feel a little bit familiar because we already did it a little bit. Um, we're going to write congruency statements and we're going to match up corresponding parts as well. <coughs> so if you look down here in this little section though, congruency statements, it shows you two triangles here, triangle ABC and triangle DEF. And they labeled, I mean, they marked those triangles, or they labeled them based on the way the congruency statement went. If you look, <coughs> angle A, it's congruent to angle D. That's why they're the first two letters in the congruency statement. Angle B, it's congruent to angle E. That's why they're the second letters in the congruency statement. Angle C is congruent to angle F. That's why they're the third letters. And then if you want to mess around with the sides too, the sides match up as well. Side AB is congruent to side DE. Side BC is congruent to side EF. Side AC is congruent to side DF. <coughs> they can give me a congruency statement and not even show me this picture right here. And I would know what angles and what sides were congruent just by the statement. Because congruency statements have to go in the order of the corresponding parts. Um, next thing. A valid congruency statement must match all corresponding angles and sides. <coughs> this is called a CPCTC statement. What is that? Y'all gonna hear me say this a lot. Y'all gonna get tired of me saying this. <coughs> uh, CPTCC. Ooh. I say it fast. CPTCC. Whatever. Corresponding. All that means is a long way to say corresponding. Uh, parts of congruent triangles are congruent. So, well, it's a statement you make after you prove two triangles to be congruent to each other. You say if two triangles are congruent, then the corresponding parts are congruent. That's a CPCTC statement. <coughs> and y'all, we're going to use this a lot when we get into our proofs after we do our EOC next week. I don't know. Last year, the kids liked proofs, but the year before, kids didn't like proofs. I don't know how kids feel about proofs from year to year. We're going to see when y'all get there. I don't know how excited y'all going to be about it. <coughs> uh, Next, list all the congruent angles and sides given the congruency statement. So number one and two down here, all they give you is a congruency statement. But that's all you need to know what's congruent on two triangles. They don't need to draw the triangles out for you. They give you congruency statements, you can figure it out. Uh, so for example, starting out with my angles, just looking at this congruency statement, I know angle J is congruent to angle P. I know that angle K is congruent to angle Q. I know angle L is congruent to angle R. I know that just from looking at this statement. All I'm doing is matching up letters. Don't overcomplicate this, kids. You're going to hurt your head if you do. Then talking about the sides of my triangles, I know that side JK it's congruent to what, Billy? A little bit louder. PQ. And then 
side KL it's congruent to side QR and then side JL is congruent oh forgot the congruent sign there to side PR Now they wrote that congruency statement that way. That's not the only way you can write it. Like I told y'all, and I don't know if y'all remember from the last unit, it doesn't matter how you start, it's the finish that matters. So they named them this way. They named the first one this way, so they had to name the second one that way based on what the congruency of the triangles was. They said write another congruency statement down here that is valid. <clears throat> so I could rename my first triangle. Say I call my first triangle, triangle K L J. So yeah, I switch it up like that and call it that. <clears throat> um, Emra, if I call that first triangle KLJ, what would I have to call that second triangle for this congruency statement to stay valid? QRP. Thank you. QRP. I can rename them like that and everything is still going to match up. Doesn't matter how you start, matters how you finish. Uh, all right, you know I get tired of talking. Uh, Zoe, number two, uh, list my congruent angles for me. I'm gonna write whatever you tell me. No, you gotta go better than that. I ain't saying you're wrong. There we go. Uh huh. Whoa, 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 whoa. I'm only asking you for the angles. Is it okay? You don't want to speak my language, I see. I want you to say angle W is congruent to angle E. You know what? Thank you, Zoe. I'm going to just keep going. You're messing up my video. Angle F. Angle Y is congruent to angle G. Maybe I should do this. Maybe I should leave y'all in. I know. I'm pretty sure you are. It's not hard. I'm just trying to make sure everybody's there with us. Devin. Uh, I'm gonna do this, Devin. Side YX. Side YX. It's congruent to what side? Good. Thought I was gonna fake you. Um, Rama. Side YW. Congruent to what? Do it. Uh huh. And then obviously, y'all know WX is congruent to EF. Lucas, write another valid congruency statement for me. Triangle. Say what now? No, 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 no. We're talking about a triangle now. Okay. That's what you want to call it. Y X W. Uh huh. It's going to go into what? said YXW first, right? I'm just asking. And then what you want to call the second triangle? GEF? That's, that would be wrong. And I'm glad y'all saw that. 
He called the first one YXW, and then he tried to call the second one GEF. That would be wrong. If you're going to say YXW, say GFE. Honestly, the back is uh, going to be me just running around the room asking y'all questions. I'm not about to do this back. I will do this first. Before you start on the uh, number three, before we even do anything on here, they call these two triangles congruent. I'm going to mark off what I know to be congruent. It makes life a lot easier for me. Start with my angles. They said angle K. Let's go on to angle A. Angle P is congruent to angle Y. M is congruent to A. And then KP is congruent to AY. All I'm doing is reading a statement, y'all. I'm not doing no tricks. To, oh, my bad. Why answer me? I ain't see that. I'm thinking y'all seeing me doing this. <clears throat> I mark my angles first. That's why I went through. My angle K can grow on angle A. P can grow on the Y. M can grow on the C. All I'm doing is reading the statement. I'm not looking at nothing else. <clears throat> and now I'm doing my sides. I'm saying KP is can grow on to AY. Then I'm going to say PM is can grow on to YC. All I'm doing is looking at the statement once again. This ain't no tricks. Then KM is can grow on to AC. And that'll help some of y'all if you want to mark first. Uh, Roger, you can ask. Do A, B, and C with me. A says segment KM is going to go into what? Thank you. A, C. Angle Y. Angle Y. Angle P. Triangle MPK is congruent to triangle what? Say it one more time. There you go. CYA. Triangle MPK is congruent to triangle CYA. D, E, and F. Miss um, Welch. Side C, Y is congruent to. Gotta say it the exact way they said it. Side C, Y is congruent to side. You have to say it the exact way they said it. I don't know how many times I got said it. Side C Y is congruent to side M P. Angle K. <coughs> Triangle Y A C. It's going to grow into triangle. YAC. We'll see you. PKM. Finish the last two G and H. Let's see. Side PK. And then angle ACY. Angle KMP.
came before is another one. And this one, instead of um, just giving you letters, they actually give you side lengths. Uh, they tell you these two triangles are congruent and how they're congruent. They say triangle STW is congruent to triangle BFN. Find each missing measure. <coughs> uh, you can play matchup and move some stuff from triangle to triangle. You know they're both congruent, so you can move stuff around if you want. Uh, and I might end up labeling first. <clears throat> so I'm missing side WT on this first triangle. WT, RTW, however you want to look at it. But I'm going to call it a WT. WT would be congruent to what? Huh? So what is WT? 14 centimeters, right? Alright. Um, let's do the size first. So BN is uh, what? 9 centimeters. And then obviously BF 17. <coughs> Let's get our angles next. I'm missing angle W. Angle W is congruent to what? N. So angle W is 82 degrees. <clears throat> uh, I'm missing angle T too, but angle T is congruent to what? Angle F. So I can't use the other triangle to find angle T, but I can use some prior knowledge to find angle T. How y'all gonna find angle T? Anybody, somebody. Yes, because the triangle adds up to what again, kids? All right, if you got two out of the three angles, you can always find the third angle. That is triangle angle sum. Tell me what that angle is. I ain't doing that, man. 30 who? 31. Oh, 31. I thought you said 38. All right, so let's put our angles in the other triangle. <coughs> angle B. 67, and you know the angle F is going to be 31. There you go. That should make doing A, B, C, D, and E, and F quick. Um, Jorge, spit them out for us, man. B in equal to what? 99 centimeters. Uh, measure of angle W. 82 degrees. TW. Mm -hmm. Measure of angle B. BF. And then measure of angle F. Thank you, sir. And it's easy to go in and just fill your stuff out first. I think I used to teach kids the opposite way. We used to try to figure it out as we go. Just fill the whole thing out first. It's just easier that way. <clears throat> um, number five, similar situation. Triangle GHJ is congruent to triangle XYZ. Find each missing measure. <clears throat> Devin, I called on you yet? Yeah. Don't lie to me, Devin. Uh, you did. Yeah. Tylee. <clears throat> Uh, they say these two triangles are congruent. Looking at triangle GHJ, what should we know off that? What kind of triangle is GHJ? Good. So that means XYZ is going to be what? Yeah, congruent and what? No, I'm just, I said the triangle XYZ is going to be also what? What's the word you just said, man? Stop tripping. Isosceles. So we can mark this isosceles too. We know it's going to be a sign over here. <clears throat> so we can start moving stuff around. Um, like I said, let's label first before we even try to do all that other stuff. <clears throat> uh, HJ, what's that side going to be? 27 feet. And then GJ or JG. Now they 18. 
And then y'all know the other one. You're missing the 227, so it's not even playing around with that. 27, 27. <clears throat> and then angle H, 38. And then angle G and angle J. How are we going to find those? This is uh, 38 from 180 divided by 2. Good. Subtract 38 from 180 divided by 2. We should all already know that because we know our base angles. And our isosceles triangles are congruent. So we need to subtract this from 180 divided by 2 to get our base angles. Somebody spit it out. 71 degrees. 71 here, 71 here. And y'all know it's going to be the same thing over here, so why play around? There you go. This should make our fill out pretty quick. Rama, spit it out. GJ. 18. Major angle H. 38. XY. 27. Angle Z. Mm-hmm. ZY. Mm-hmm. And J. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, it's a degree symbol. I don't know why it got so big. Whatever. Number six. Given triangle PHS is congruent to triangle CNF. Find the measure of each. Find each missing measure. I read that horribly wrong. <clears throat> I think most of y'all will be able to figure out what to do on this. So they want us to find... Uh, the value of X, the value of Y, the value of Z. And you need to be, be able to match up to figure out what to put where. On this one, um, we won't have to do no additional labeling. We can just pull. Let's see. Hold on. Might be missing one thing. Oh, yeah, we are. We're going to figure out one of them. Is Z the one that's dependent? Let's check. No, Y is. <clears throat> Alright, on this one, let's uh, match up so we can write equations. On angle, uh, I'm trying to find X first. On that one, I got the expression 6x minus 29 on angle H. <clears throat> angle H is equal to our congruent to what angle? N, right? So I'm going to do 6x minus 29 equals what? 115. That's going to solve for x. Yeah, I know I'm not solving, so let's not play these games. Yeah. Okay. Well, these two over here said 24, so make sure you get 24, too, when you solve. You need to show your work, though. These are your notes. How you got that? You got to tell me. We're talking about for why. But you got to tell me how you got that, because you know some stuff missing. Hold on, hold on. I know, good. Gotta find what? No, you don't. Not necessarily. You don't have to find Z first, though. It don't matter. Yeah, that's good that you did, but that's fine. No. I'm gonna show you why not. <coughs> Alright, so y'all should have got 24 by now. Let's not play these games. Uh, the second one. We solve for y. The expression for y is on angle f. It's 3y minus 1. We've got to figure out what to set that equal to, though. <clears throat> angle f is congruent to what angle? S. So therein lies our issue. There's something on angle f, but there's nothing on angle s. 
so we got to figure out what angle S is before we can write that equation. Good news for you. Um, you just solve for X and you don't even need that. You got an angle over here, P, that's 36 degrees, right? You need to know what one of these other angles is to solve for S. Well, we know what angle H is. What's angle H? 115 degrees, right? So I can just write that in there. Angle H is 115, angle P is 36, what's angle S? Twenty nine degrees, thank you, sir. Y'all should all know how we did that math. So now I got something to set my angle F equal to. I mean, yeah, my angle F. So three Y minus one equals twenty nine. And like he said, you should get y equals 10. That's a two-step equation. It shouldn't take y'all long to solve. <clears throat> and then the last one is solving for z. z, on that one, you got 4z minus 32 on angle c. Angle c is congruent to what? Angle p, which is 36 degrees. <clears throat> So 4 is my third two, whatever. Y'all got what? 17. 17. <clears throat> when you solve, it's a two-step equation. It shouldn't take you long to do. Add 32, divide by 4. You can't do that, then we in trouble. Last one, I'm going to help you with setup on. I'm not about to do that one for you. It's similar to the one you just did, except for you got to draw your triangles out for yourself. They didn't draw the triangles for you. And you got to label your triangles, <clears throat> which shouldn't be hard for y'all to do. All right. So in this one, they say, I'm talking about number seven. Triangle DEF is congruent to triangle JKL. If you read all that, they give you all these expressions, and they want you to find the value of X and Y. Well, to do that, you first need to, uh, you know, set your triangles up so you can see where everything is. That would be the best visual for you to have. I'm going to just draw two triangles. And they don't have to be the prettiest. You're just looking at them for labeling reasons. I'm going to have them both the same way, too. I'm not going to turn them sideways from each other. That's just what they do. <clears throat> First one I'm going to label D, E, F. And no matter how you label your first one, you could you ain't have to label the same way I did. It just matters how you label your second one. Since I labeled my first one D, E, F like this, I'm going to label my second one J, K, L like this. And then I'm going to write my stuff in. They said D, E equals 18. E, F is 23. These are sides. They should not go inside the triangle. <laughs> then they said, uh, what was that? Uh, DF is 9X minus 23. 9X minus 23. JL is 7X minus 11. Then they said JK was 3Y minus 21. <clears throat> Next thing I want to do, these are all side lengths, so all I'm really worried about is my size. Mark your size congruent. I know DE is congruent to JK. I know EF is congruent to KL. And I know DF is congruent to JL. <clears throat> if you had to mark your angles too, you could, but you don't need to, but I'll mark them for you anyway. These are all side lengths you're dealing with anyway. As a reminder, since these are side lengths, nobody should be thinking about 180 on this, right? These are not degrees. 180 is out of the equation totally. <clears throat> Based on the way we drew, Zoe, what equation are you setting up to solve for X? You 
sound like you're guessing, but yeah. You shouldn't be more confident than that. Alright, let me set up my y equation too while we're at it. I don't, I don't want to solve nothing. I want to stop right here. Oh, I wasn't asking you, but thank you anyway. What was it again? What you going to do with uh, that 23 on the other side? On EF. I trick you so easily. Emma, what you doing with that 23 in this one? Nothing. Billy, say 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 it louder. Nothing. nothing. I never heard you say nothing. I never heard you say nothing. Understand, 23 is what I call it. I don't call this for y'all before I said it in the notes the other day. It's just a distractor in this problem. You don't need it. I don't need 23. I just need the size that are congruent. That's just an extra piece of information that they gave you. Don't think because they give you stuff you have to use it. Common sense. I told you it's a common sense course. <clears throat> Alright, let me stop this video.